What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another D5 render new feature video for you. So in today's video, we're gonna check out the new features contained inside version 1.9 of D5 render. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so if you open up the new version of D5 Render, you're gonna get this little splash screen right here, talking about some of the new features that are contained inside of this new version. Alternatively, if you want more in-depth information, um, you can go to this blog post or um, forum post in the D5 Render forums, which I will link to in the notes down below. But this is really where they get in-depth on what they've changed. So you can scroll down and you can see the detailed introduction of some of these features. And uh, we'll come back and take a look at these in a little bit, but um, this is a good place to go if you want to find more information. All right, so first off, we have the new Geo and Sky system. And basically what this does is this gives us a lot more control over the sunlight in our scene. So you can see you can see how you can find this in your sky window off to the left hand side by clicking on the option for geo and sky. And what this does, so this allows us to control the time of day in our scene by using a slider right here. And notice how things get light or dark based on where you put this. In addition, you can also adjust your north offset which is basically going to control where your sun is located. So let's say for example that my north offset was over here, you can see how the sun is actually flying through this scene. And what this does is this gives us a lot more control over where the sun is in our scene, so we can have different shadows and other things like that. So this gives us a lot more control. It also gives us the ability, if we want, to add geographically correct lighting inside of our scene. So they've also added a feature for focus on objects. So let's say you have a larger scene like this one, right? That has like a ton of terrain and everything else. Well, flying in to zoom in on things, especially like smaller things, can be really frustrating. But what they've done is instead they've added the option where if you click on an object like this to select it, there's a button over here for move the camera in front of the selection, or you can just tap the Z key in order to fly into this. Notice how as soon as I did that, if we look at these plants, you can see how we zoomed right into those plants so we could see exactly what was on our screen. So you can select any of these plants and then just tap the Z key in order to zoom into them really quickly. So that can save you a ton of time when trying to zoom into specific things inside of your scenes. So they've also added the option to toggle this inspector panel either by hitting the F11 key or by going up to window and uh, clicking on the button for hide inspector. So you can turn that on and off really quickly now inside of D5 render. So they've also added the ability to quickly replace models in your scenes. So let's say for example, I've got these trees in the scene that I wanna replace. Well, I could just select them inside of my uh, of my scene settings over here. So I can just do a shift click. You can right click and you can click on the button for replace from assets. What that's gonna do is that's gonna pop up the render assets browser and it's gonna allow you to check a model that you can replace these with. And notice how quickly I was able to come in here and replace these with these pine trees um, just by selecting them. So I can do the same thing by selecting. So I can switch them back by clicking on this right here and see how they swap out really fast. So there's also a new foliage material template inside of your materials, which you can use in order to create plant leaves. So it's going to give you the option to upload different maps in there. And so if you were to open up the material editor and look in here under your material templates, there's an option for foliage and it's going to give you options in here for the different maps that you can load in. So your subsurface, your normals, all those different things. So you can load all of those in in the foliage template in here in order to make those plants inside a D5 render. All right, so we also have the ability to adjust the color of trees that we bring in now. So you can see how I can either come in here and adjust the value of the tree right here, or if we bring a bunch of trees in using the brush tool. So let's say we were to bring in a number of trees using this tool right here. If I was to select one of them with the material picker and then make some changes to the color in the map like this, and then adjust the hue and other things like that. Notice how these trees are all going to adjust at the same time. So trees that are placed with the brush tool um, as a part of a brush like this are all going to adjust at the same time. So you can adjust individual trees or groups of trees brought in with the brush tool. All right, so they've made a number of different changes to the different lighting settings in here. So for example, you now have the option in here to control the skylight and the background light intensity separately, which is gonna give you more control over the way that your background looks 
inside of a scene. And so they've also added a light source radius parameter to the point light and the spotlight, which is basically going to give us control over the shadows that are created. So for example, your light source radius is going to adjust how soft or hard the shadows are inside of your rendering. All right, so in addition, there's been a number of different optimizations to different effects inside of the program as well. So for example, they've optimized the emissive effect, uh, making it work with different kinds of shapes um, better than it was working before. So there's been optimization there. Um, the water material um, now does a physics-based simulation of light scattering, so the water is more realistic than it was before. There's also been optimization optimizations of the fog reflection effect as well as glass reflection, um, allowing you to get better reflections inside of your renderings. So all of these optimizations kind of work as under the hood type things, but they're going to result in better, um, they're going to result in better renderings coming out of the program. So there's also been upgrades of the global illumination inside of your renders. So there's been a number of different things having to do with optimizations, which are going to make things faster. So and you can read about all of those in this blog post. Um, in addition, there's also some additional color picker modes, which is going to allow you to be more, um, more precise with your colors and some optimizations of the select controls having to do with your HDR images. So you can check those out here as well. There's also some new plant assets that have been added to the list too. So 412 Asian plants are now going to show up in the library. All right, so I will link to a couple video tutorials about how to use D5 Render on this page. I'm super impressed with what they're doing and the speed at which they're doing it, but leave a comment below and let me know what you think about this new version of D5 Render. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.